어? 3D Zip Guy here, back with another 3D printable action figure build. Whether you're new here or a longtime supporter, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I truly appreciate it. I hope I can earn that subscribe and like button click from you today. As you saw in the intro, today we're assembling a brand new, fully articulated Zip Guy action figure. And this one's a milestone because for the first time ever, I'm exploring a quadruped design, a four-legged creature. Designing the zip tie articulation around this kind of anatomy really opens up a new world of possibilities for future figures. I'm already thinking horses, centaurs, Godzilla, and that's one of my favorites, and a bunch more. Honestly, the ideas are endless, and that really excites me. But hey, before I get carried away with all those future ideas, I've got to get these parts prepped and painted. I've gotten a lot more comfortable with painting lately, mainly because I finally started using a magnifier lens. Doesn't magically make me a good painter though, but that's fine. Working on these figures makes me happy. And hey, every time you download one of my models, it helps keep the lights on around here. I already painted the rest of the parts. I just saved this one for the camera so you can see the process up close. <sighs> that is good enough for me. Let's get this cape prepped. We have two options for the cape. You can print this collar and glue a cloth cape onto it. To make that easier, I designed a tool I call the Cape Compass. It's basically just a template for the cape. Here's a quick demo. I'll use a clean piece of paper so you can see clearly. First, assemble the tool like this. Press it onto your cape material. Here, the paper. Then, take a pencil, place the tip into the hole, and trace curved lines on both sides. After that, just cut it out. If you need a bigger cape, just print the tracing arm twice and snap them together. That way, you'll get a cape that drapes right around mid-shin. Second option, print this flat cape with the collar. Dip it in boiling water for a few seconds until it softens. Avoid soaking the collar. Then shape it while it's hot. I'm reckless enough to use my bare hands, but don't do that. Use utensils, be careful. There's a reason I don't market these models to kids. All right, that piece is done. Now, while we're at it, I've got a fresh set of parts here from JLC3DP, who also happens to be the sponsor of this video. These are parts for my 1 12th Zip Guy figures. One printed in CBY resin, another in LED 06060 resin, and this black one in JLC black resin. Let's see how they handle boiling water. While waiting for that, let me tell you about our sponsor. JLC3DP is an online 3D printing service that's perfect for low volume production and prototyping. They can print your models in a wide range of industrial materials, including stainless steel and even titanium. The process is really straightforward. Just upload your 3D model to their site, choose the materials and specifications you want, and you'll get an instant quote right there on the page. Once you place your order, they start production immediately, and shipping is fast. I got these parts in under a week. So whether you're making one prototype or a short production run, JLC3DP has you covered. You can check them out at jlc3dp.com. Links in the description. Big thanks to them for supporting this channel. Let's check out the CBY resin first. Barely any flex in there, just a tiny bit. I also dropped in a thinner CBY resin printed hand off camera. This resin already had a little flex to it before soaking, but it seems like there's no noticeable change in its rigidity. Now, the Lido 6060. This one definitely softened up, but I can feel it stiffening pretty quickly. The head softened too, but again, it's already getting harder fast. That's what she said. <laughs> pretty cool. Last one, the JLC Black Resin. Before dunking this head, I noticed it had some flexibility almost like a very rigid rubber. But after the heat, it actually feels a lot harder. Really interesting results. 
I'll order some nylon next time, see how that compares. Anyway, let's get back to assembling this thing, starting with the legs. Insert a zip tie from the bottom of the paw. Take the foot and insert the zip tie from the paw into the bottom of the larger donut. Think of it like the human foot. The paws are basically the toes. Feed the zip tie back into the paw and lock it tight, then trim off the excess. Next, insert a zip tie into the back lower bridge of the knee. Pass it through the shin and around the upper donut of the foot. Bring it back up through the shin and out, then lock the zip tie. Before tightening, tuck the zip tie head into the shin cavity while pinning it down with the knee. Carefully tighten while keeping the knee pressed against the zip tie head. Then trim the tail. Now, insert a zip tie into the inner cavity of the thigh. The tail should pass through one of the slots and loop around the upper elbow bridge. Feed the zip tie back into the thigh. Then lock, tighten, and trim the excess. Repeat the same process for both hind legs. Insert a zip tie into the lower torso, or pelvis, of the dog. As the zip tie comes out the back, thread it through the tail. Slip the tie back into the pelvis and lock it tight. You might need to use a tool to press the zip tie head into place. Once it's secured, trim off the excess. Let's connect the legs to the pelvis. For this build at 185%, we'll use an optional hip joint spacer to add extra tension for the zip ties. At the default 100% size or scaled to six inch figures, you can skip it. All right, we'll start with the right leg. Insert a larger zip tie through the spacer, then feed it into the center cavity of the pelvis and out through one of the round holes of the hip joint. Loop the zip tie around the thigh donut, then guide it back into the pelvis and through the spacer. Lock the zip tie, position everything in place, and tighten it carefully. Use a tool or your finger to pin down the zip tie head while gently pulling it tight. Once that's secure, repeat the same process for the other leg. Test it out before trimming the excess zip tie, just to make sure the legs can hold their position. This is the torso block. We'll snap fit it into the pelvis like this. But before that, we'll need a zip tie head. I'm using a scrap piece for this. I'll just cut the tail flush to the head. Now, take another zip tie of the same size and insert it through the torso block so it comes out the hollow side. On the other end, attach the zip tie head we cut earlier by inserting the tail into it. Slide the head close to the part, then feed the tail back into the torso block. Once that's done, take the pelvis assembly and pop the torso block into the cavity. You should feel or hear a little click. That means the block is locked in place. Now, let's move on to the front legs. Start by inserting a zip tie into the lower front bridge of the elbow. As the zip tie comes down, guide it into the forearm and pass it through the paws donut. Feed it back into the forearm and lock it. Before tightening, tuck the zip tie head into the forearm. Hold it down by positioning the elbow. Gently tighten while keeping the elbow in place then trim off the excess. After that, grab the shoulder and insert a zip tie into the cavity, feeding it through one of the smaller slots. Guide it into the upper bridge of the elbow, then back up into the shoulder through the opposite slot. Lock the zip tie, tighten it, and trim off the excess. Do the same for the other front leg. Now moving up to the chest. Just like we did with the torso block, we'll need a trimmed zip tie head. Insert a fresh zip tie into it, then bend the zip tie near the head. Feed it through the chest cavity and out through one of the shoulder holes. In this case, the right side. Loop it around the shoulder donut and back into the chest. Lock the zip tie and carefully position the head inside the chest cavity. Tighten as much as you can, then trim off the excess. Here's a closer look inside the chest cavity. If you're printing at 100% scale, there's no need to add another zip tie head. All right, we're almost done. Thanks for sticking around. Just a few more steps left. Insert the neck peg into the neck. Once it's inside, turn the peg so the flat side is facing forward. Now take another torso block and a torso donut and pass a zip tie through them. Insert the zip tie into the chest cavity and out through the neck hole. 
loop it around the neck peg and back into the chest cavity. Then pass it through the torso block and lock it around the torso donut. Position the block firmly into the chest cavity. Then tighten and trim the excess. Next, it's time to assemble the torso. Take the zip tie from the pelvis and pass it through the midsection piece. Then loop it through the torso donut. Feed it back into the midsection. Position the middle part against the chest by turning it 90 degrees, pressing it close to the chest, and then rotating it back into place. Lock the zip tie, tighten, and trim off the excess. Now onto the head. Pop the jaw onto the neck peg ball, then press the head onto the jaw. And that's it. Oh, and remember the cape we heated up earlier? Just clip it around the neck, right below the collar, and we're done. This figure was printed at 185% scale. For this size, I use 5mm by 200mm and 8mm by 200mm zip ties. If you're printing at the default 100% scale, you'll need 3mm by 150mm and 4mm by 150mm zip ties instead. For the filament, I went with Sunlu Beige PLA Plus 2.0 and Sunlu Red PLA Plus 2.0. These were kindly sent over by Sunlu, who also sponsors this channel. They've got a really solid lineup of 3D printing supplies for both FDM and resin printing. Big thanks to Sunlu for the support, I truly appreciate it. I'll leave links to everything I use down in the description. A few of them are affiliate links, so if you grab something through those, I get a small commission at no extra cost to you. It really helps me keep making more figures like this, so thank you for the support.